So here's kind of an unusual situation. We have a spring attached to a wheel, and the problem doesn't really say a lot about what the system is actually doing, but presumably the spring is going to be oscillating and is going to cause the wheel to move along with it. I'm honestly not sure whether the implication is that the spring is like going around the wheel and the spring is moving at an angle, or if it's just a thing where the spring moves back and forth and just the wheel moves back and forth slightly with it. it it's another detail that the problem is unfortunately vague about, but I don't think it really matters if, anyway. Anyway, let's first make a note of where the energy is coming from. With the rotating wheel, there's going to be some rotational kinetic energy. So I'll make note of that. So the formula for rotational kinetic energy is 1 half times I, the rotational inertia, times the square of omega, which is the angular velocity. Now there's also going to be the elastic energy within the spring. So that's just 1 half times K, the spring constant, times the square of X which is the displacement of the spring from its central point. Interestingly, if we interpret this problem, if we interpret this scenario as being the sort of thing where this pivot point is constantly going around in a circle and is taking the spring with it, then this x can also be rewritten as lowercase r, the distance between the point and the center of the wheel. Because in that case, the wheel's axle can be seen as the spring's central point, and this lowercase r here is going to be effectively the same thing as the spring's amplitude, like maximum distance, from that point. So you can also write the spring's energy as this, 1 half kr squared. Now as for what to do next is when things get a little bit tricky. Um, I've read a few different solutions. There, there are a few different ways to solve this problem. Uh, I think the most rigorous solution I read involved using torque and a lot of differential equations to solve the problem, which is, which is not only a really complex method, but is also way, way, way above the skill level of, for, for the textbook that this problem comes from, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, there are a couple, diff a couple other ways to do it that are unfortunately a little more hand-wavy and potentially confusing. I think specifically the, uh, the method that the textbook's official answer guide uses is a solution that involves making some weird substitutions so that you can identify the equation as being analogous to another equation in simple harmonic motion, and then making a weird substitution with that to get the answer. And it's just, and that, and that works, but it's, again, unnecessarily confusing. So I'm going to use a solution that I think is slightly less hand-wavy, still a little hand-wavy, but less so, but also a lot easier, simpler to do. So I'm going to use a solution that kind of plays off of the energy exchanges between the spring and the wheel. So as in any simple harmonic motion situation, the spring is going to be moving back and forth, and its energy is going to be swapping between potential energy and kinetic energy. Like, as you know, when a spring is squished or stretched out, it's got a lot of elastic potential energy. And then as it, like, shrinks down, that's converted more into kinetic energy, which is transferred to the wheel. So the assumption that we can kind of make here is that there will be at least some point where the energy within the spring is equal to the energy within the wheel, since they're going to be going back and forth between each other, rising and falling. So we're going to analyze that point, that specific point in time, because it's going to be the easiest to look at mathematically for a problem like this. I'm just going to get rid of these halves right now. I would also like to replace this I with the more detailed version of the formula for, for rotational inertia with a hoop, which is what we've got. And if you don't have it memorized, that's all right. It's provided in like most tables and textbooks anyway. But in the case of a hoop, the rotational inertia of the hoop rotating around its central axis is going to be mr squared, where m is the mass of the hoop, and r is just the radius of the hoop itself. Just like this. Now let's get the omega squared on its own. Now let's get the omega on its own by taking the square root of both sides. And since we have an r squared and another r squared uh, on the inside, we can just take them out. 
and this is what we end up with. And this fits the parameters for part A. So this is going to be the answer for part A. Now part B asks for a new formula, but when R and, well, small r and big R are equal. So in other words, where the spring is attached to the rim of the wheel. Now we've already done all the hard work. This next step is pretty easy because if small r and big r are equal, then it's just going to be the same thing as like any number value divided by itself, which is just one. So nothing really has changed other than that r over r term has become invisible. So now the formula is just going to be k, or the square root of k over m. And this should seem familiar, since now the formula is basically just the same thing as the standard formula for angular frequency. So that's cool. And finally, part C asks about for when small r is zero. So in other words, when the spring is attached right to the center of the wheel. Now it's probably already obvious that if the spring is at the center of the wheel, then there's going to be no exchange of forces at all, and the spring is going to have no effect on the wheel, and the wheel will have no effect on the spring. But we can even like kind of prove that mathematically too, because if we take a look at this formula we got in part A, if small r is zero, then the whole thing is multiplied by zero, and so the angular frequency will always be zero. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I will do my best to leave a reply. If you have a more detailed question, or if you have requests for future videos, I've got a Discord server, which is linked below and in the channel description. That's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely day.